you can't even imagine, but the whole city, you would go to the, to the Washateras, you would go, you know, just anywhere in the buses across town. And it was the buzz all over the city. Everybody was talking about the tank farms on the Spanish radio, on the African American station, on all the, uh, the regular stations in town. It was just a, a big, big discussion and dialogue. And that was so important because it was a political issue. It was a, it was an issue of injustice. And people were becoming very, very conscious about what was happening in their community, but also people from other communities were very conscious about what was happening to our communities. And it created a lot of bridging and working together of people who strive for humanity and who work against injustice. And that's what made it so powerful, I think, is that during the whole movement of environmental justice, a lot of people had awakened that the environment wasn't just about nature kind, but it was about humankind, and that you couldn't separate nature and human. It was intertwined, interwoven, and that we had to be looking at the whole big picture about what was happening uh, in the environment of where we live, work, and play. And that's why it was such a big uh, issue, because the ramifications were just so huge. I remember right after all that happened, the African-American community then said, well, you know what? We've been living with the garbage trucks, city garbage truck dumping into the watershed, the smells that come from there, washing their trucks. They got organized and says, well, you know what? If you can shut down the tank farm, we can certainly shut down the garbage trucks that are happening here. And sure enough, they were. They were successful, so it kind of began this whole rolling circular activity and movement about uh, the changes that needed be, to be done. And it didn't matter if you didn't have money. You know, it didn't matter what color you were. You know, these changes needed to uh, to be done.